Hi everyone, welcome back. I am Anne Marie Green. Some lawmakers are raising new concerns after they say they witnessed deplorable conditions at Border Patrol facilities in Texas. More than a dozen lawmakers visited the centers in El Paso and Clint yesterday. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio Cortez was among them, and she described the conditions as unconscionable. The renewed outrage comes as Customs and Border Protection is launching an investigation into a secret Facebook group. It reportedly includes thousands of current and former agents in it. Some users allegedly mocked migrant deaths and posted sexist and racist jokes about Latino members of Congress, including Ocasio-Cortez. Jeff Begays is in Washington with more on how the agency is responding. Hispanic Caucus Chairman Joaquin Castro shot this cell phone footage of women in CBP custody, saying some have been denied life-saving medication and showers. We saw that the system is still broken and that people's human rights are still being abused. He was one of several members of the Hispanic Caucus who toured detention facilities in Texas. This is CBP on their best behavior, telling people to drink out of the toilet. A CBP official was quoted pushing back on that statement, saying they're drinking potable water from the sink attached to the toilet. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez did say this was the type of toilet, but insisted the sink portion was not functioning. She was one of the members of Congress included in lewd and sexist Facebook posts by CBP employees in a secret Facebook group uncovered by ProPublica. The Facebook group was dubbed I'm 1015, which is Border Patrol code for aliens in custody. One member asked if this photo of a dead migrant father and child could have been faked because the bodies were so clean. There are many within CBP who become desensitized to the point of being dangerous to the migrants in their care. CBP officials called the Facebook posts completely inappropriate. These do not represent the thoughts of the men and women of the U.S. Border Patrol. On Monday, after signing a bill providing $4.6 billion in humanitarian aid at the border, President Trump threatened more deportations were coming. After July 4th, a lot of people are going to be brought back out. So people that come up may be here for a short while, but they're going to be going, they're going back to their countries. They go back home. So Jeff Begays is joining me now from Washington, Jeff, and I think I want to start where your story sort of ended off. Um, the president says, uh, did say that uh, there would be uh, more apprehensions, that apprehensions would resume. When is that set to happen? Well, we, we don't have a specific timetable on that. Uh, those are the kind of details that ICE typically likes to keep under wraps. Um, but we've seen over the last couple of weeks that uh, when they have operations planned, those operations and some of the planning at least tend to leak out. We haven't really seen that yet in this case, but the fact that the president mentions that there will be more uh, apprehensions coming after July 4th uh, will obviously get reporters digging into the story to try and figure out, well, what is going on at ICE and when are these operations planned for? Uh, so we'll just have to see in, in terms of the timing for this, but we know that uh, some planning has been underway. Um, so you mentioned in your piece that the president signed a $4.6 billion humanitarian aid package on Monday. What do we know about that package? What is it meant to do? Well, the bulk of that money will be going to provide resources to these detention facilities, uh, shelter and care for migrant children. Uh, there is about $145 million slated to go to military missions along the border, but None of the money is expected to go to construction of the border wall. Obviously, that is something that uh, most Democrats are against. Uh, this was a bipartisan bill, and as you know, it was passed last week. So we saw a video of the uh, Hispanic uh, caucus visiting uh, these uh, a couple of these facilities on the border. We heard from uh, Ocasio-Cortez as well as Joaquin Castro. Um, they seemed really sort of disturbed by what they saw. But I'm wondering if you're hearing from anyone else about what conditions are like within these facilities. Well, sure. We've we've seen numerous Inspector General reports, these are watchdog investigations by DHS's Inspector General, which show uh, a consistent pattern in some of these facilities, whether it's uh, not having the resources needed to care for children or even adults. 
And another thing that we're seeing is this massive problem with overcrowding, a problem that, according to the uh, Inspector General reports, could lead to violence because there is rising tension on the inside. And what we're hearing and seeing in some of these reports is that even Border Patrol agents are, are concerned about the possibility of violence because they're, they're is this lack of resources and there is this consistent problem uh, with overcrowding. Of course, I can imagine, you know, it's a, there's a pressure cooker situation here. Uh, not enough space for the number of migrants that are in there. They don't know how long they're going to be in there. And, you know, now we hear word of another death. I think it's six since um, October. So this is a 30-year-old man from Honduras. He passed away in the agency's custody. Often, you know, we don't find out much afterwards about the cause of death or whether it's related to the conditions. But what do we know about this man? Well, it is still early on, and ICE has released information uh, saying that an autopsy will be performed to determine the exact cause of death. But as you noted, this is the sixth death in ICE custody since October. And uh, since late last year, frankly, these government agencies have tried to be more transparent about these fatalities in their custody because lawmakers have been putting pressure on them to be more transparent. And so we got word yesterday of this now sixth person to die in ICE custody. But as, as far as the cause of death is concerned, we just don't know yet. And you mentioned the inspector general, uh, you know, looking into how uh, immigrants and migrants are being treated in some of these facilities. Uh, the inspector general is looking at the facility in Clint, Texas, taking a look at how DHS is uh, handling things. When can we expect that re the results of that report? Well, what we are being told is that another report is expected sometime this week. DHS IG, the inspector general's office, is not being uh, giving us specifics about when that report will be uh, finally released, but we suspect with the fast approaching July 4th holiday that it could happen as early t as today or it could happen tomorrow. We'll just have to see. You know, you but what we expect, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, yeah. you know, what we expect again is, is more of the same. Um, you know, CBP is being bombarded by these reports, which consistently point out the same types of conditions. And so that's what we're expecting to see from this report that we're waiting for now. You know, we saw AOC talk about, um, uh, you know, migrants being told to sort of drink out of toilets. And then we heard that there's sort of pushback, that they're not being told to be to drink out of toilets. You know, there's a sink, it's attached to a toilet. That's the way sometimes these facilities are, are, are set up. Um, the inspector general re general reports, it seems, are um, at least reflecting um, that there are certainly some lapses. But do the reports seem as extreme as what we heard from lawmakers yesterday? Uh, well, CBP would say no. I mean, they have pushed back on how the Clinton, Texas facility has been characterized by activists and some of the lawyers who say they've been on the inside and lawmakers. So, you know, what we're hearing to a certain extent are CBP officials saying, no, the conditions aren't as dire as these lawmakers are pointing out. Mm -hmm. Here's a picture of this uh, water system that we have. Yes, it is unusual, but this is essentially standard issue when you have a detention facility. And so that's what they're saying in this case. Uh, but there, there is no doubt a clear pattern here. And many people on the inside of CBP, uh, they, they understand that they are under intense scrutiny, in part because of these Inspector General report, which are hard to argue against, uh, because they point out specifics. And in some cases, they have CBP officials responding uh, to some of the conditions that they are talking about in these reports in the affirmative. Uh, and so while you do see in some cases push back from CBP, in other cases you will simply hear them say, listen, we need more resources. We've been saying this for a while, and the conditions that you see are a result of the fact that Congress has not given, them, given us the money that we need. Yeah, it would be nice if they would let members of the media in with cameras to sort of verify some of what they're saying. Um, Jeff, thank you very much.